How does one distinguish reality from fiction? The answer is simple. Experience. What tends to be fiction to some is reality to others, based on their experience alone. It is awful hard to convince someone that they didn't see something that they know they saw with their own two eyes. Evidence is another key factor in a reality check. If it is present, the only ones denying the facts are the ones that do not wish to believe them. There is said to be lurking in the land between the lakes area of western Kentucky a beast with a taste for human blood. It is described as a werewolf-like creature with long cutting claws and flesh-tearing fangs. It stands heads above a normal man and can be heard often in the echoing howls of the area's dense forest. One tale of its ruthlessness is said to have occurred in the early to mid 1980s in the Nickel Branch Bay area. The campground today is no longer existent but it still can be accessed by overgrown trails when one knows where to look. Mount Pleasant Cemetery is at the entrance to this area. One summer evening a family of four was preparing to settle into their camping spot for a pleasant outdoors adventure and some quality time together in the country. A father, mother, older brother and younger sister were making preparations to bed down for the night. The father and the boy were at the tongue of the camper using the manual leveling jack when the beast came up from the crawl and attacked the man. The man was instantly decapitated and had both arms and legs ripped from his trunk and thrown in all different directions. The young boy tried to escape by running to the side door of the camper away from the beast, but was caught just as he got the door opened. He then was torn apart just like his daddy. The mother and the daughter were in the camper, and the mother attempted to slam the door, but the beast tore through the screen door and gained entrance. The inner area of the camper was torn to shreds in the ensuing struggle and blood and body parts littered the inside of the camper. The woman had torn all of her fingernails off trying to fend off and battle the creature. The little girl had ran into the back bedroom and managed to close the door behind her while the attack on her mother was still happening. The beast, then aware of the little girl's flight, and once finished with the mother, ripped the bedroom door off its hinges and gained access to the little girl. The beast then dragged the little girl outside of the camper and fed on her. When the authorities arrived at the gruesome scene, the little girl's body was found lastly, about 40 yards away and 30 feet up in a white oak tree after her blood dripped on the brim of an officer's hat. It has been speculated that the beast was drawn to them by the excessive cologne and perfume that they were wearing at the time, and that dogmen perceived the smells as being aggressive and provocative, and as an attempt to overmark their territory. There are no public records of this attack, and any effort to dig up any information on it will be met with silence. Officers that were on the scene have confirmed the attack as 100% true. One state trooper has stated that the creature's DNA from hair and blood samples at the attack site came back as a canid, human, and primate combination sequence. I cannot sit here and emphatically state that this attack is a myth, nor can I state that it is in fact reality. I can, however, state that the only way to find out is to go out there and see for yourself. Although I must add that it may be the final experience that you have on this earth. Then you have to ask yourself, is it really worth it? This is Greg Champy for the Crypto Files.